Director, the Health, Hospitals, and Social Services Committee. Actually, Director of Finance, uh, Finance Ms. Uh, Lomax, if you could stay with us because of the letter you just okay. sent out. She's going to be something. Okay. <laughs> but if we could get you to stay here to address this letter that just came out. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and call, send all committee members here and present. I thank you, as always, for your attendance. Yes, yes. So, uh, the first resolution we have is 2018-1024, uh, sponsors Vercher, Gilmore, and Withers. It approves an agreement between the Metro Board of Health and the Metro Government and the Tennessee Department of State for the provision of administrative law judges. Motion. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? Is there anyone here to discuss? The health to um, uh, it's, uh, That's a long-standing relationship with about ALJs who serve basically just as a judge when you have a contested employment case or something like that. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions from the committee? Okay, we're ready to vote? Yeah. All right. All in favor? All right, seeing that there are, um, the majority has it, is recommended to the committee for approval. The next one resolution we have is 2018-1029, sponsors Virtue, Gilmore, and others. It accepts a grant from the Best Friends Animal Society to the Metro Board of Health for a uh, Lagun Lagunitas sponsored adopt a shelter dog promotion. We have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? They subsidized 50, uh, 100, uh, 100 adoptions uh, last fall. And Lagunitas is a beer. Oh, that's a beer. For the doggies. The dogs were not drinking. Oh, okay, they weren't drinking it. Okay, thank you so much. So is there any more discussion? I just want to hear you say that word again. Oh, my gosh. I, I think I'm going pass. You did good. You did good. You did great. Lagunitas. Yes. Oh, my yes. gosh. Okay. Hey, there you go. Stick so I think we're ready for the vote. How many? Yeah. Four? All right. Uh, any against or non vote? I was not uh, here for the discussion, so I'll abstain. Okay, one abstention. I and uh, I heard dogs. Dogs and beer. Yes. Nine and five, so it is yes. recommended for approval to the committee. Yeah. All right. The next one is resolution 2018 1030. Sponsors Bircher, Gilmore, and others. It accepts an intake diversion program grant from Pet Smart Charities to the Metro Board of Health to provide funding to establish a safety net net voucher program to provide low-cost medical services and behavioral vouchers to assist in decre decreasing the relinquishment of animals to the Metro Animal Care and Control. May I have a motion? So moved. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? I'd like to know more. So, um, owner surrenders are the largest source of intake to the shelter. For a lot of folks, it's it's because they the dog has a, a health issue of some kind that they can't afford to get fixed, or they have behavioral issues that they don't know how to deal with. And this grant will allow us to subsidize them for help, either behavioral training or a medical issue. And they've got a soft cap of around a couple hundred bucks per dog. It's not hard and fast, but that's what they try to keep. Oh, if, if I can kind of sidetrack on that, the. Um uh, I guess it was last year, maybe the year before that, we, uh, the council was able to secure enough funds in the budget for a person to be able to help folks keep their dogs. Um, and I don't know if you recall that or not, but um, I'm sure that that's going well. There's also a foundation called the Brown Dog Foundation um, that works with um, individuals to be able to help get their dogs uh, the medical care they need should they not be able to afford it. Um, and so I know that there are other foundations that are available to do that. And um, both with them and any others, I would hope would also be available so that in addition to what we're able to do, that they're given additional resources. Um, but particularly Brown Dog Foundation um, came out of Nashville and, um, and they help nationwide folks with dogs with medical issues that um, would, would, uh, would live if they had the uh, medical care. And uh, so I just wanted to sidetrack that in case anybody was interested. Brown Dog Foundation. All right, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Is there any more discussion? Questions? Okay, if not, we're ready to uh, vote. How many for? All right, seeing that uh, the majority is for and none against is recommended to the committee for approval. Okay. Okay, 
The next one is Resolution 2018-1031. Approves Amendment 3 to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to Metro Board of Health to provide nutrition, education, and services to eligible women, infants, and children and breastfeeding peer counseling programs for citizens of Davidson County. Uh, the sponsors so are Virtue and Gilmore. It's so moved. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? That's, that's, the, the, that's the WIC program. That's the largest grant we get, and that is a readjustment based on statewide. <coughs> they just recalibrate it every so often, and it's a small reduction, but it's, it's a small. It's a small. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. As always, we appreciate you. Um, we're ready to take a vote if there's no more discussion. All right. So it is recommended uh, to the committee, to the full council body, excuse me, for approval. All right. So resolution 2018-1032 appropriates a certain account for the benefit of the health, uh, hospital authority in an amount not to exceed $13,231,000, uh, uh, which will be paid directly to the Metro government to Meharry Medical College for services provided at Nashville General Hospital through June the 30th, 2017. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. There's a couple of uh, substitutes with this. So uh, discussion? Uh, how you want to handle that? So yeah, I know we have a couple with all with that late file. Yeah, we substitute. did. Okay, so I guess we'll take up Schulman's, maybe. Yeah, Schulman. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, just for the benefit of everybody who was not there um, in budget committee yesterday, um, there was discussion of exactly how some fully said how do we take these things up. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so um, since I had the microphone, I said, well, I moved my substitute. So um, after a long period of time, about three hours of discussion, and with the help of Council A. Wiener and everybody else who was in the room, uh, including the chair of the committee, um, we came up with a, um, a substitute that actually requires an amendment to the substitute, which is what causes it to be late filed. Um, as of last night, what we were trying to do was work it out among all the parties to make sure we came up with something. And democracy was in action, and we actually came up with something. Oh. The total oh, overall Lord. amount was 17.14141. So that was what the substitute, as amended, should be in front of you right now. It is a late filed amendment, uh, but that's the um, that amendment. Well, I'm sorry, that substitute is actually what the budget committee approved last night. And again, I know we have parties here, uh, the finance department is here, but as of last night, we had an agreement from all the sides that this would be what we could move on. And I'm happy to speak to the specifics and outline it if you'd like. Sure, go ahead. Do we need to uh, move this substitute? Um, probably. Yeah, let's do that. I think probably. that's appropriate. I move. Okay, it's been moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Okay. Madam Chair. I, I think you also need to move as amended, okay. uh, move the amendment. Okay. I believe, I believe Madam Chair. So want to, okay, that's fine. Yes. Okay, so want to move the amendment? Move the amendment. So move. Move. Second. Okay, so it's been moved and properly seconded, the substitute and the amendment. Thank you so much. Now we can begin, begin discussion. Okay, so what it does is it decreases the outlay from the original 19.7 million down to um, 17.141. And what it did is we took out the stay pay, contract labor, and the fringe. And so when we took out those dollars and we reinstituted the impounded funds of 2.4 million, that reduced the from the 19.7, it actually reduced the amount that we were allocating to the undesignated fund balance. But then, because we were actually higher than the 13.4, <coughs> the undesignated fund balance then went to Hold on, let me tell you the exact number so I don't get it wrong. Um, yeah, there is, I'm sorry. Um, 14741. So what it does is it prioritizes the use of the impounded money to offset any additional funds that would come out of the undesignated fund balance. It does not allocate, as I said, for the state paying the contract labor and the fringe, but it importantly includes the stipulation that we facilitate as a council the um, strategic planning between now and June of 2019 to make absolutely sure that we have every single stakeholder at the table together working on a plan. 
no more of this, everybody's in their own corner, and then we end up having rooms full like this with a big fat fight. So it, we all felt that it was time for everybody to come together and get with the plan. And so this stipulates the plan. It also stipulates that the hospital will be providing um, fiduciary information to us. And we felt that this was important because we have a contractual obligation to Mary. We need to fulfill that. If we do not pay our bills in a timely manner by either deferring this or changing the structure of what they need, then the vendors are actually not going to give us discounting. We're going to get hit with finance charges, and we're going to end up being greater in debt. So how much time do you want to have that cycle spend? Um, additionally, um, we're looking at four months with the full intent of everybody that was in the room that come the next budget, we're going to put the money back, we're going to get that undesignated fund balance above 5%, and we're going to make absolutely sure that these impounded fees are put back as a priority of the next budget. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything? No, I, I think you got it right. I know that Councilman Mendes is in here. I know that Councilman Mendes was important in the drafting of that original stuff. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg was involved. And then a lot of people last night, <coughs> including the chair, were very, very important in this process. Um, I will say that my initial substitute, the original substitute, had 19.7, which you mentioned and took it all from the undesignated fund balance. And I think everybody got a little bit, was not that happy with that, yeah, was I, but that's yeah. what I started with. Um, and so this takes it down, um, I think, um, it gets it closer to where it was in the original bill that the mayor's office, or the resolution originally. So with the 2.4, Council A. Wiener went through the numbers, it actually brought that down so people would be more comfortable. And it was collaborative. It was really collaborative. And yeah. that was a breath of fresh air. Yeah, yeah, it was great. So discussion, yeah? Yes. I uh, had the misfortune of not being able to be there last night, uh, but I was able to watch on my iPad, which has its own problems. But <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure that I understand um, where this extra money is coming from, from um, a fifth grader's perspective, like, you know, where you, you're, you're, you're really, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, you just came up with $4 million, where did that come from and where did, what's going to hurt? Where, where am I hurting because of that? So that I understand where it's coming from. Um, can I hear from Talia or somebody to better understand exactly what, what the difference is going to be based on what, what was proposed and what we've ended up with? I have not seen the amendment, so I don't know what um, is being reviewed and if, a, if another source is uh, available. But I, re I, sent a, I sent a memo to the um, council just a, um, <coughs> a couple of hours ago because I wanted to be clear about um, how I got to the $10.2 million, okay, in terms of the recommendation. And the memo includes an outline of that. And also in there, I indicated that should that number increase beyond the 13.2, if the decision is left to the finance department to make, to identify the sources, then I'm going to have to go in there and look at other things in the budget to reduce. Can I take off okay. on that? Okay. So and and, where, where and uh, I have not, again, this was just handed to me, so I don't know if that's yeah, specific but we were, item. I think, uh, um, Director Lomax, with all due respect, yeah. you were in the meeting uh, yesterday with us the entire time, and when we kind of uh, detailed it, and you also provided insight, and yeah. we had discussed I mean, it come from the general that, fund. In writing. Okay. 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 I mean, I, I was there when it was discussed, but... Uh, You've got to, I mean, if you've got an extra $4 million, then you've got to find another $4 million. Can I ask one other question? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want to know where that came from so yeah. that I understand. Um, uh, you alluded to the fact that uh, we're going to put the money back. So I assume you mean the money back in the undesignated fund balance where we took this money from. I'm just wondering where you're going to get it to put it back. The in. next budget. Oh, okay. <coughs> Priority in the next budget, oh, as we the, discussed the last night. The, the, uh, mm. the state pay? The state, no, no, no. I'm, first, I'm talking about, we were asked about the undesignated oh, fund balance. Oh, yeah. Put so that is a requirement. And then the other thing, Councilman Pulley, you may remember this last night, there was, and Bruce, Bruce, there he is. So um, 
the state pay, those things do not go away, but there are things that can be dealt with in the next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So everybody tried to make it very clear that that right. issue wasn't going away. Right. It just right. it just took the, about no, they made that around two million clear. dollars or so down. Mm -hmm. So we didn't. It wasn't the full 19.7. It took it down to seven. Sure, I get all that because uh, it was probably more based on what I heard last night than the 19.7. <coughs> So there's, there's more of what I heard last night than uh, likely more than 19.7. So, I mean, uh, Madam Chair, if it's okay, sure. Sure. yeah, I think uh, all of us sitting there understood, mm -hmm. and obviously there's people here representing General, and I think Meharry is here as well. Um, this is an ongoing problem. That's why the work that Council A. Wiener and Councilman Mendes did on this kind of strategic planning committee is so important. I know we've had all these discussions about different committees taking a look and trying to figure it out. But we have to, to sit down and work this out. We, yeah. we really do. You know, it gets to the point where we can talk about it forever, again and again, but I think there's a real effort at this point. We have to work some of these things out and bring the parties together. Yeah. Independent consultant, correct? Mm -hmm. Have somebody come in and tell us, without the politics and all the other stuff, Let's figure out what we should do, mm -hmm. and that's why this thing is so. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still looking for it uh, because the 19 did cause some heartburn, and 17 sounds better. I'm just trying to figure out than 13. I mean, I, can, I get a, that. Undesignated <coughs> fund balance. Yeah. Undesignated fund balance. Yeah. Does that um, that's what says to you? That's the savings account. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we're taking it from our savings? I'd just like to summarize what the original recommendation was, if you would. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so. uh, can yes, I ask a not, question before Hold on one second. Uh, um, yeah, let's, let's do it. Yeah, so what we're, yeah, we're going to do, yeah. we'll, we'll go in order. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to answer that question? Yeah, I, I would just like to just kind of have, you know, 30 seconds or whatever, just to kind of summarize how we were, 30. what the original plan was to close the $13 million gap. Okay, if you go back to the original email that was forwarded, um, we we tried to go in and we I tried to identify things that would not impact services, direct services to people in the city. So okay? maybe you just so we identified some specific programs that had natural savings in those accounts this year that it wouldn't stop anything from moving forward, but that for this year we, we would impound those funds where there was clearly going to be funding available. That's that that's that yeah. list so of maybe, accounts. Could you, could you share with us that list again with okay. affordable housing? It was the tuition reimbursement. They're all listed here. Okay. The stormwater contingency, small business, the HIP program, et cetera. So that was step one. Let's, let's, let's see what we can look at and see what we can cut before we even begin to look at departmental savings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing we said in the memo is, quite frankly, 85% of Metro's budget is in salaries. The mm -hmm. only way you can, you can get to this kind of money is through salary savings. So the recommend, my recommendation to the mayor was a hiring and promotion freeze. And we sent you guidelines on how <coughs> myself and Director Hall agreed the types of positions that might be a, might be held and the things that would move forward. For example, we said we are not going to stop first responders. First responders, they're still they're still going to be hired. Critical positions that are hard to fill, they're still gonna they're still gonna be filled. But we would be very careful about you know do you have to do that promotion right now? Can you wait six months? But to do those on a case-by-case -case basis, the intent was never to stop Metro business, okay. okay? And we felt like that we could generate some savings by just being careful about filling and promoting positions off the end of the year, the end of the year. And then thirdly, we proposed that finance was going to work with the departments to find a minimum of $2 million of additional savings uh, in departmental budgets just through natural savings accounts and we were going to go in and try to and try to do that. We felt like if we took those three specific <coughs> actions at the end of the year, we'd probably be back close to that 5%. Okay? okay. okay. So when last night the number increased, I thought it was important for me just to follow up to say, mm -hmm. hey, I've got to go back to the drawing. That's what all this letter is about is, mm -hmm. That's $4 million. I've got to go back to the drawing board 
and revisit to try to to try to assess how you get four more million dollars. That's the entire purpose of this memo. It's just so. Maybe just explain to us, though, it seems like the memo is saying if we pass this, that you're still going to do the empowerment fees that you originally, are, are you doing that? Well, and I think that that's they're still in, recommended. Yeah, they're still in. They're still okay. recommended. Yeah, we check them out. Okay. So, yeah, I was just trying to make it's sure. I want to be, substitute. be yeah, clear. Are you, okay. Mm -hmm. But I just want to be, like, I guess crystal clear. Are you saying that you would still, after the council said we passed this bill, you would take other actions in addition to that? That's the piece I wasn't clear about. Like, you I would, would still, I would, you could I would still have, override I would have to. That's the only thing that, I, I mean, I have a responsibility as finance director sure. to, to make sure that those balances, you know, there's a policy of 5%, and I've got a responsibility to be, to take action, to do something when I see that the balances have dropped. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying here in my note is I plan to take that responsibility seriously. And uh, should this pass, I'm, I will have to go back in there and look further. That's all I'm saying. But in some okay. of the points, we're, on <laughs> some okay. points we're the same, right? Yeah. But so, okay, so we're going to go with Ms. Yes. Uh, Council Member Hastings, yeah. and then we'll go with Schulman, and then Council Member Weiner. All right. Yeah. Uh, Talia. Thank you for being being as clear as possible, which which you you always do, considering the situation that you're in. But what are you know? This administration uh, has spent a, a heck of a lot of money on some other things and put some things up. What is there on that total, or or whatever programs or whatever that we're doing that we need to stop right now? in order to or put a halt on if there's other actions or other programs or if it's transit whatever there is in order to because a life is more important than any other thing right now to me uh what is it that you would suggest just i know you you, you work for the administration so that may not be an appropriate answer for you a question but can I, can we, I, can we I need just, to look at that. Can, can I maybe just address it in a different kind of yeah, way? Yeah, okay. Because I, I really want to make sure that everybody understands the magnitude of this number, mm -hmm. okay? And the types of actions that will have to be taken. If you look at the general fund budget for many departments in this government, um, the entire general fund budget for the health department He's sitting there mm -hmm. is about $21 million. The entire budget for that entire department. Mm -hmm. So when you start looking at numbers like that and you start trying to identify $17 million savings and you start thinking about where you might be able to go in there and identify uh, options for filling gaps like that, People need to understand that's significant. You know, that's not a drop in the bucket. That's a that's a big number that, as finance director, that I have to deal with and that I have to go back in and look at in a thoughtful way. But also, <laughs> we we don't necessarily have a a money shortage, and we're making a heck of a lot of money right now here here with the city. But overall, I think we realistically need to look at the bottom line that yeah, health care has to happen just like police and fire they have to happen so we are going to have to pull everything back the covers back to see what we need to do and what we need to do right now and cut those things or put a halt on those things until we can get that you know any extracurricular activities when we didn't have the money as a kid we couldn't go that time so whatever we need to do, uh, Ms. Lomax and uh, whoever else that's on that and on, at that table, we need to stop it now. All right. Okay. So it was Councilmember Schumann, and then I'll recognize you, sure, Councilmember uh, Sledge. Yeah. So um, let me just ask you a quick question. Um, and I know you've got okay. difficult responsibility with all this stuff, but um, we had understood with the 13.2 that you were going to have to take money out of the undesignated fund balance. You were going to give yourself a room with the promotions and things. Right. But it was going to take that fund under 5%. It was. Right? Okay. And with, with these actions, we had hoped to begin to restore it toward the 5%. Right. right. But with the understanding that as soon as we get through the next fiscal year, we're going to have to put money back in there. Yes. So part of what we were trying to do last night was make it so it wasn't 
It wasn't as much as just taking 19.7 out of the undesignated fund balance. That's why we, we actually reduced it and then brought the 2.4 back okay. in. So, so aren't we, we're just a little bit more further than we were, uh, maybe four million. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I'm just saying that's another, I, I can't tell you today. I understand. Mm -hmm. But I mean, million. that's all I'm talking when we about. started this whole conversation last night, we were taking money, we were going to drop down below 5% in the undesignated yes. fund balance. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And now we're still in that same boat. Even if we take a little bit more, we're still taking money out of the undesignated fund balance. We'll still have to replace it. But we keep General Hospital in a much better shape if we do what we said we would do last night. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let me ask you one other question, and that is, and maybe this is not unfair, but I mean, there was obviously a lot of work last night. I mean, you mm -hmm. saw everybody working mm -hmm. together, and yeah. it was such an interesting thing that we were able to finally come up with a solution, all working together, kumbaya, all that other mm -hmm. stuff. Are, but you all were a part of that. Are you now saying that, I mean, and I understand people have to back up, but mm -hmm. are you all not okay with this at this point? No, I'm not. Still was okay with yeah. one number and then week later work, okay? I, just, I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying is I don't think my narrative has changed at all. My narrative is if we provide a supplemental appropriation, then I have to make recommendations on how to fill the gap. And that's what's being presented here is, is if the number, if the number increases, what I'm just saying, if the number increases, if it were one dollar. But, but, we but we all knew that anyway. Right. So the question was last night we all, I guess what I'm trying to do is figure out. I thought we all had an agreement to move on. That's why everybody was really happy. Or do we still have the agreement? Are we still there? Uh, I'm speaking out of turn. No, we, we, uh, we want to honor to keep it in order. So we said that it was next. Council Member Sledge, as you've spoken, we want to honor that, right? So everybody, we've been following the order. Right. Can I get in order? Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, back at the line. I've got, I've got a couple of questions that pertain to What's being put in the proposed amendments to the substitute, reconciling with the memo, and I, and <coughs> powers under the charter. And what yeah. Council Lady Winter and I were doing, we're trying to find legal in here, but I don't know that they're in here right now. So the substitute, the, the amended substitute, calls for the additional $4 million, and I'm going to look at Councilman Shulman and Council Lady Wiener to say that four, additional $4 million comes from the undesignated funds, correct? That's what I think I heard. Okay, that's correct. What I'm hearing from the memo is that the finance, that we could very well pass that, the finance director could say in order to get that extra $4 million, it may not come from the undesignated fund, that it could be further impoundment. Am I misunderstanding? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that everything is on the table when I have to go back and look at it. Right. That's all I'm saying. And, and, Do you agree? Yeah. And so okay. to that end, <laughs> yeah, that. Madam Chair, what I'm trying to... to understand it. What I'm trying to determine is our powers versus the powers of the Charter, what were the powers of the Finance Department as given by the Charter. We could pass, and that Charter would say any daggum thing we put in there on the impoundment. It could say anything we say about the funds, the, un, the undesignated, undesignated funds. Yeah. But the power lies over here for the finance department to determine where those funds come from. And I think what I'm hearing mm -hmm. is that if we're voting, we're voting on a number. Yeah. We're voting on 17 million. And we can call it what we want to call it as far as division, but we're voting on 17 million and then we're turning it over to Talia. Right. And, she well, may... and I would say, if I could just, sure, sure, but, sure, yeah. you know, I want to do that with you all in a collaborative way, you know, that, that we need to have a discussion around what those options are. And that's one of the reasons why in the original uh, legislation as far why we had all of the whereases, because I wanted it to be on the table exactly what actions were being taken so that if it were approved that you guys wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. After so, it were approved, that was kind of like the reason why those were those recitals were added. Sure. Uh, I think, and, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I just <laughs> want to make that clear because I think we're we're voting and then we're almost. I mean, we're we're voting on a number, but in some ways, <clears throat> I think I don't want to downplay what we do here. But we're making yeah. a suggestion. Right. I, I would oh. say to that, and then I'm gonna let. Uh, I think it's Councilmember Weiner and then Glover. When that draconian 
supplement was submitted to us, we were voting on that as well. And I was not going to vote on that, right? I agree. Yeah. So um, I think uh, the way that, that was taken out of think, um, out of affordable housing, those are things that you know are important to the citizens of Nashville. So I, I wasn't going to sign off for that. So it's either we put forth something, and they're going to do what they want to do anyway. But I think as the legislative body, we have to decide, right? So freezes on fire persons, you can say it however you want. People don't have problems with firemen, right? And so a memo should have went out once again detailing, but it didn't detail that we're only doing promotions. It just went out saying we're putting freezes on fire persons, right? So I think at this point, like uh, Council Member Schumann said, and also we took the, we, we're taking things from small businesses. I mean, so it seems like to me we're just cutting from one group of people that are disenfranchised from another. So I like the idea of the undesignated uh, fund balance because as Council Member Schumann said, it had already gone under the number anyway. And it's a policy. It's not a state. Uh, and I guess that's why he's confused. We, we talked several times about that last night. We said, is it a state law or is it policy? And I heard over and over, unless I'm wrong, it was policy, right? So at that at that point, we made a determination because I just didn't feel comfortable as a council member saying that I'm going to cut from small businesses, I'm going to cut from affordable housing, I'm cutting from the bottom. <coughs> so I thought that this was a good collaborative effort. And so I want to turn it over to uh, council member Wiener. And this is an example of a cataclysmic communication gap because the memo that Talia sent mm -hmm. absolutely spoke to that which we already had in the amendment and the substitute, or in the amended substitute. It right? just recaps We it. were saying the same thing. So let's put that aside. In so far as the $4 million, to Jim's point, we're underneath the 5%. And in four months, we're putting it back. And we are honoring our obligation, contractual obligation, to what it is we have to do. At the end of the day, by charter, to Colby's point, mm -hmm. Talia's got to balance our money, and she has already said in this letter, and if I could wave a magic wand and fix it or change it, I probably wouldn't have sent the memo, but I would have picked up the phone and called the sponsors and said, I need to look at the amended substitute so that we can all make sure we're on the same page instead of the letter, because the letter hit all of us as being, uh-uh, what you did last night, we're not going to go there. And it would have been a lot more palatable if we had all come together instead of us reading your letter the way we did. But then when you explained it, it's just sensible. That's, that's, that's all. Yeah. So, well, and we had not. There we are. Provided an opportunity to see the so, substitution. So I know that we're supposed to go over it, though. I mean, I'm trying to see who, though, who. The letter. I yeah. was like, but, I need the letter. But the office is saying that they want to work with it. I'm trying to see who are you working with on the budget. What council members did you work on when you offered the supplement? Could you offer up those names, please? Okay, so you didn't work with them. So I don't know how we yeah. work together. Yeah. Yeah. Council member. Yeah. So could I offer up, can I add one more quick thing? Absolutely. Could I offer up, Talia, well, that once we... work we... with the budget chair. We meet with the budget chair weekly. So the right. budget chair was in these meetings every week, and we met right, with the budget chair. Right, but we're saying chair. council members council. in general. 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 That's what we talked about. She said, I want to work with chair. you. It's not just the chair. Can yeah. I offer a suggestion, an opportunity, an opportunity, that once we get past tonight, Pick some members of budget and health, and let's sit down and hammer it out. Yep. After you do your due diligence. Don't trust it. There you go. Don't trust it. That's all I, I mean, got. I don't know what that means. <coughs> I trust it. Council what that Glover means is, is she shares with us where she's going to take the money. Yeah. Yeah. I want to recognize yeah. Madam Chair. Yeah. She has to. Yeah. Thank you. First of all, Madam Chair, thank you. I'm not a member of this committee, but I did want to come in and hear the conversation. I think the thing that's most disheartening to me at this point is I thought last night after we had a very lively conversation, we walked away, and I thought we had a gentleman's handshake. I hope we're still there. Now, I'm going to ask you this. We're going to subsidize the hospital somewhere between 47 and 51 percent of their operating budget. I think that's right. If we, if we go through the numbers, and you and I can sit down, and I'm telling you, I'm pretty much on the numbers. We subsidize MTA for a much higher number, and in fact, we raised the amount of money we gave MTA this year. And I know it's a pet project for transportation, but we have obligations already in place in this city. And as I said last night, 
I'm a conservative. I think we all know that. I'm coming at this thing from the same way I always come at it. How much is it, how much does it cost the taxpayers if we close it? The one thing I'm disturbed about this afternoon, and I read it with the same tone that I think other council members read the, the email memo, whatever you want to call it. And Mr. Kelly, I realize you, you disagree with me. But let me just say this very clearly. We have an issue in this city. Yes. And we are trying to figure out how to deal with it. I will tell you, I looked at the cash flow analysis. I went and met with, with Bruce, and I looked at the cash flow analysis. And I looked after the announcement was made how things started diminishing mm -hmm. with regards to the cash flow. Okay. I believe that if we had done this in the, in the beginning, right it would have been $13.2 million, perhaps. But we didn't. And we were all caught off guard. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's uh, unfair to say that every member in this room was caught off guard. Correct. And so we're dealing with fallout from a decision that was made downstairs without any input from us. And so therefore, I am not backing down. And I am saying that we do what I asked us to do last night. Let's act as adults and let's deal with this, and let's be very clear with one another that we will deal with this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Council Member uh, Pulley? Yeah, I just uh, want to make one comment to this. I think last night's discussion uh, illustrated where we are. Uh, I'm certainly uh, going to support us moving on where we are now, but I think it, as a bigger picture, based on, and please tell me if I'm wrong, folks, but uh, based on what I've done and uh, what I've seen over at the hospital and the numbers that I've looked at and uh, the efforts that uh, Dr. Webb and his group have made to uh, uh, do their best to increase their revenue streams, we're not looking at a few more million dollars here. What we're looking at is a significant outlay of money to get the hospital where it needs to be or you do what was proposed earlier. Those are the options. I don't see uh, us moving forward just putting a Band-Aid on the problem. No. And that's what we're doing right now, in my opinion. Uh, last night, we talked about 19.7 million, maybe. And then, uh, you know, quite clearly, that's not, pro not gonna be enough. Uh, so, um, I've seen the equipment. It's been used on me, and I know what it's like over there. So That's I, I just think we need to go in with our eyes wide open and understand what we're looking at here. Amen. We're looking at significance, and significance beyond what we're doing now, if that's the direction we want to move. All right. So. All right. Well taken. Um, uh, council Member Hastings, are there any more council members? And if not, we will um, wrap this up. We will... Uh, let you uh, speak, and then we have, um, just out of respect, we have Dr. Hildreth here, and we have Dr. Webb. We'll let them make their uh, comments to the committee, and then we'll, we'll take it uh, uh, to a vote, All right? I just wanted to mention to uh, Meharry and also Metro General staff members and employees, <clears throat> uh, thank you all for, for being here and also speaking uh, last night. Uh, you were actually the dean at uh, Meharry, uh, thank you for what you said. You were the only person to come out and point out to say that announcement uh, that when it when it was done, it was not accurate information, mm -hmm. and it caused a hardship on both sides. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Nobody else has had, has put that out there in a way, and it came from the the appropriate side. So. Thank you very, very much. This is a serious issue, uh, and it's and it's all rolling downhill. And if we don't stop it, it's going to be something that we're not going to be able to handle. Uh, we have to start someplace, and I think that uh, council, all of us last night, have come to a conclusion on where we're going to start. This is not a not an ending. This is not a, a a balance or whatever that we're doing. We are looking at spending nine billion dollars yeah. on a tra transit system, yeah. and quite honestly, if we can't deal with this, God dog it, it's spilling nine billion dollars. <laughs> is that it? Doesn't will not have my vote. It's inappropriate. Uh, to it's in, yeah, yeah. It it's is, inappropriate. Yeah. To too. Well, it, it is not inappropriate when yeah, it, it talks about the lives no of the state, individuals. Okay. So it's, state, we're going to go. All right, all right. Yeah, I'll do the point of order. Yeah. Order. Point of order. So, oh, so what we're going to do yeah. at this point? 
Yes, All comments are well taken. So what I would like to do is, because we said Dr. Hildreth yes. and Dr. Webb, yes. and I think we're going to take it for a vote, and what we'll do, if there needs to be some discussion, we can have it afterwards, because I, I do well, think we've kind of vetted this out enough, and I think everybody sees where everybody stands, which I think is very important, right? Uh -huh. So I um, just have one little comment. <laughs> I'm a you said little, little, <laughs> little. <laughs> the time is always right mm -hmm. to do the right thank thing. You. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. That's a mental statement. Thank you. That was a. That was a. That was. <laughs> Doctor Hildreth, do you have any uh, comments before the committee? Your hearts tell you what to do. There's a yeah. <laughs> uh, I just say that I was very encouraged by being able to listen to the discussion mm -hmm. last night. I mm -hmm. thought it was very thoughtful. Uh, people had some really good questions that we tried to answer. I do want to point out one thing about my colleague. Uh, Dr. Webb came to the hospital at a time when it was in complete disarray. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that in two years that he was there, to be fully JCO accredited, mm -hmm. which did not get the recognition that it deserved, mm -hmm. was a huge accomplishment. My point is that we kind of know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just for the record. <clears throat> And if you just give us an opportunity, yes, we can do something that the whole city can be proud of. Yes, that might even become a national model. Okay. So just for the record, <laughs> we 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 kind of got this. That's all I want to say. Thank you very Thank much. You, you want to yes. add to that? <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm always appreciative of Dr. Hilbert and his uh, well-versed comments. Um, I. Um, I will say that where we are is no different than where the rest of the country is. Healthcare is still the number one issue in this country, and you're having a discussion about health care. I remember in 2015 when I came before this body, and the, um, the reception, we were looking for supplemental funding, which is what we're doing now. The reception was not very pleasant. What I learned from that was that there had not been transparency. Uh, what I'm seeing now is with that transparency, I'm seeing an engaged uh, council body that's taking a look at the needs of the patients as well as the needs of the taxpayers. And so you're taking a very broad-based look at this. And I, I applaud you. We're going to continue to do the things that we need to do at the hospital to deliver the service. We're delivering excellent outcomes in a city that is number 42 in 50 uh, metropolitan cities worst health outcomes. We need to be looking at how we're going to improve on that. And this is a good place to start. We will pledge that we will work with the city council going forward in any way to help to improve on that outlook for this city and beyond just the underserved population. <coughs> so we're appreciative to you for all that you've done. We appreciate the, the, uh, the work that Meharry does and the partnership with him, and we look forward to continuing that. Thank you so much. So I would just like to say um, publicly, I appreciate Councilmember Schumann, all of his hard work, Councilmember uh, Winger, <coughs> Dr. Hildreth, mm -hmm. Dr. Webb, and all the people that continue to come. And um, I'm really concerned because mm -hmm. I think um, the hospital has done their part, Meharry has done their part, and the council did their part this time. We, 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 we voted on it. We said we're going to give you the money to see how it looks if you have the proper funding to succeed. I'm very concerned about how we say that we're liberals, are we compassionate, and we want compassion extended to us, mm. but we're not able to be compassionate about our most needy, right? How can you want compassion? And you just continue to cut and cut on our most vulnerable, but you want compassion. Amen. So to me, as a city, I'm concerned. Crime's going up. Right. We're sending the message that we really don't care about our most vulnerable, but we continue to vote on other things. And I think it is related, mm. because I think we're, we're getting a little bit off track. And we said, give us a budget. Tell us what you want. We have three different committees going. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the office, the executive office, can have the latitude to reset but we don't give the hospital the latitude to reset. You know, we don't give the council the latitude to reset. So I'm proud. I want to say whatever happens, I'm still proud because a lot of different people come, came together that normally wouldn't come together 
And I believe that that is a higher being. Yes. That yes. speaks to the yes. humanity yes. when yes. others refuse not to, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Like I said the other night, you can't call yourself a liberal or a human being and you're willing to cut and slice mm -hmm. at a hospital, right? Mm -hmm. yes. That provides for our most unfortunate and needy, but yet you want us to vote on something. You'll call me personally to vote on something else. And I tell you, I got your back on that. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no judgment on this or that, but when it comes to our most vulnerable, Oh. You, you have no, no no compassion. No. So with that, I say once again, I thank you, Councilmember Schumann. I really do thank you for the hard work. It was a lot of hard work. You identified the numbers. <coughs> it was stated that it was a policy, right? And so we moved from it being a policy. Councilmember Wiener came up with a middle ground. Councilmember Mendez and Councilmember Glover. I appreciate you because we're all from different, we come from different points, but we can all come together on that. So I hope that we were going to pass it and the other office, if they, we are the legislative body, let the executive office do, but it will not be on us. I, I don't want that on my watch. Okay. I refuse to have it on my watch. Now, you do what you want, but, but not on mine. So with that, I would ask uh, for the vote, how many are four? Did you want to move it forward? I move it. All right, it's been, okay. Second. I mean, four, all right. Singing uh, none against, it is recommended to the council body for approval. And we have one more. Thank you so much. I appreciate each one of you. It is recommended to the council body. We have one last one. The last one is 2018-1055, Glover, Gilmore, and others. It amends the Metro Code of Laws regarding agreements between Metro and the Metro Hospital Authority. So, Madam Chair, thank you. The, the reason I introduced this bill is because I've got a number of clients in my financial practice that happen to be physicians. Uh, I don't pretend to understand their work or anything else, but I've, I've spoken with Dr. Webb. I've spoken to a number of people around the area. And quite frankly, I asked uh, one of my higher-ranking uh, clients, uh, I said, if you had to close your practice today, could you do it in a six-month period? And he said, absolutely not. And so, therefore, the purpose of this bill is really, I think, two, maybe perhaps threefold. Number one is to take it and make sure that we systematically look at how do we, in fact, end inpatient services if that's the right move. If it's not the right move, we look at how do we fund the hospital as we go forward. And number three, I think the most important thing at this point is to make sure the staff there understands there is stability, that the city is with them, that we are going to, we're, we're going to do the right thing, which there seems to be a great deal of absence on doing the right thing. But I will say that that, that was the primary reason that I filed the bill, because I'm not certain we can actually be done with it by June 30th of 2019, but I think it certainly allows us to come to the table and have a legitimate conversation collectively as we have been doing. And so I'm not going to pat ourselves on the back. I, 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 was, I was happy about the work we did last night. I thought it was good. But we have a much farther road to travel. And so this simply, this simply gives a little more road to the map. Uh, and that's that's really the purpose of my filing it. And thank you for, for uh, being right there as a co-sponsor. Yeah, it was my pleasure. So uh, is there uh, any more discussion on this? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions sure. really regarding this. Um, does Tell me how this new amendment establishing the oversight committee, uh, does that impact this in some way? Madam Chair, not in my opinion, no. I don't think so. Because they said they could be implemented at any time. I asked Schumann about right. that. I'm just kind of wondering, is it, is it necessary to have this bill if we've got an oversight committee that's res that has some level of authority to uh, take a look at, we're not, at how we move forward on this? M Madam Chair, may I, may I answer the question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think, Councilman, I think the, the, the critical point here is to literally give a timeline that allows something that can be constructive for the entire city. Mm -hmm. um, once again, I will reiterate, we can't close this hospital in a three, six, five-month period. The cost, in my opinion, would be much higher than what we're paying today. Now, there's a lot of experts sitting in this room that are much smarter than I am with regards to their field. What I was trying to do was to say, stop. Let's all stop. 
let's come back, let's look at something real. Now, and I, I think it's very safe to say, I've had this conversation with Dr. Webb and I've had a conversation with the staff, that if in fact the inpatient services doesn't make sense down the road, I may support closing the inpatient services, but I'm not going there now because right now today it does not make sense. All this bill really does is it just says you can't enter new agreements, you can't, you can't close it. You have to keep it open until June 30th, 2019. It doesn't say you got to put this amount of money into it. You have that, that. I mean, the, all it really does is just say we are focused on June 30th, 2019. That gives us 18, 19 months for for we as a community, we as a council, we as the executive branch to sit down and have legitimate conversations. Uh, and if the committee, oversight committee is formed, I, I don't think it impacts, I don't think it impacts this bill. I think this is just saying, here's a timeline. So to where we have a goal, to where on November 9th, we don't pick up the paper or we, we see the television says it's closing. This is saying, here it is. And I think Dr. Webb, if I may, I don't want to speak on your behalf, but I think I'm, I've been very clear of saying, all right, you guys have a timeline now to say, this is what we do. And I think in our conversations, and, and again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this gives a, a, an appropriate amount of time to have a conversation about how do we go to the next place we need to go with Metro General. As a follow up to that, I, any time, I, I, you put a timeline on something like that. There, are, there tends to be things that uh, I don't ever think about that are impacted by something like this. So I'd like to hear from everyone here who is a stakeholder in this. Uh, I think Mr. Kersey is here from the administration. Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey. And I'd like to hear from Dr. Webb and uh, and Dr. Hildreth and see just what everybody else has to say about this. Okay. May, may I add one thing before you guys yeah, add? Just one second. Thank oh. you, Councilmember Pulley, for, oh, <laughs> for just giving everybody the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mind if I do that, Madam Chair? Yeah. Oh, I love it. So I'm just going to say uh, one thing quickly because I'm, I'm a co-sponsor of the bill. Is that okay, Councilmember sure. Pulley? Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, one of the things um, that I liked about it, it was to, to provide stability. And, and just at the time, it seemed t so tumultuous, and that the, the the staff was leaving, people were not coming to the hospital. There were several different uh, committees that had been formed, mm -hmm. and the mayor had asked that some of those committees had been formed, and then she retracted on some of that and said that she would do another one. So I also thought it would give an opportunity for those committees to finish doing their work and at least let people know, you know, if you ever been um, uh, employed and 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 you you lose your job due to no loss of your oh. own, it, it puts you in a very precarious situation. So I thought it would just provide stability. And so that's why I uh, co-sponsored the bill. And I figured by that time that all the different committees that have been established, mm -hmm. we said that the mayor had established some, and she said she was going to, but it, it would give given all of those committees the time to do the work. And I know they would have some wonderful things. And it doesn't say that we're not moving in a different direction. It's just saying, before we reset again, let's just see what all is on the table. And so that's why I was a co-sponsor. And who did you say you wanted to take? Actually, it just let, me, let me add one reason on why I put June 30th of 2019 is because the current council won't be in power uh, after the, the we, we'll finish this current budget and we'll do the next budget. After that, we won't be there. And so therefore, I, I didn't feel that I, I could obligate future councils uh, to, to any particular dollars, and that's that's my reasoning from a fiscal standpoint. That's my reasoning for the June 30th, 2019. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I totally get it and understand exactly where you're coming from. I just want to make sure I hear from all parties concerned because a lot has happened since then uh, that's favorable, uh, uh, namely the establishment of this um, oversight board, and this will definitely have some level of impact moving forward. Uh, and I wonder if it's necessary. So I just want to hear how it's going to be impactful. That's fine. We'll take sure. that. And just That's remember okay. too that they, they said that they might change some of it. So I don't know. Right. The, so, but you, who did you tell me who, who you wanted? Because you're my I buddy. I want to hear from everybody. Okay. okay so you said Mr. she's got some. Yep. We're going to go go sure. with you. The, yeah. the only thing I would add here, and not to look ahead, is that we have to start getting ready for an FY19 budget cycle. And so we would welcome as many smart people who want to sit around the table and help us get this figured out, knowing that it's not all going to get solved in three or four months. But we got to do what we have to do now, and then we got to start looking ahead at the next fiscal year. And that's going to take a lot of work, and I hope we're all as committed 
to doing that in a transparent way as we are right here today. I can assure you I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll all be here. <laughs> so, uh, so Cass, anybody else want to weigh in on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to weigh in. Well, they, they had, uh, we had said when you stepped out of the room, but we'll take it. We had kind of, okay. Okay, I just don't want you to I'm think cool. that we're, yeah, okay. I want to make two quick comments. Um, one, <laughs> the alternative to this proposal that the mayor made was to have an indigent fund. And so you have the perfectly well-designed, executed, indigent fund right now it's being managed because you don't have to pay for all of the care that's going on in these disparate hospitals that they're required by Imtala to care for. They stabilize those patients mm -hmm. and then they discharge them and they go to general and then they come to general. If they're charity then we put them through our charity process and we qualify them and then we take care of them. If they're partial then we do partial. So the indigent fund is being well managed and you're not exposed to all of the care that's provided in all of these uh, private systems, which they will start to charge you for, and I can guarantee you, you don't want to see that bill. Nope. Uh, the other thing is that we, um, um, you know, optimally, uh, we would like to see the entire timeline removed. But if we can't have that, then 18 months is better than six. Uh, so it is difficult to recruit highly skilled professionals, and we get them from all across the country. When they're hearing in the media that you've got 18 months or you've got six months, is you going to be open? No. It's also difficult to retain. Uh, before this announcement was made, uh, we were looking at a $13 million subsidy. And then we had to go with all of the defensive positioning, retention, recruitment, uh, you know, stay pay. Um, the, the, uh, the, the precipitous drop in our, in our volume. So there were a lot of elements that created problems for us. So yes, optimally, we would like to see the mayor and the council say, we're going to commit to a safety net hospital. So that's what we'd like to see. But short of that, uh, we're going to have to take what we can get. And 18 months is definitely better than six. Do you have anything you want to add? Um, I do want to reiterate what uh, Councilman Glover indicated. It's very hard to start a program or shut down a complex program like a hospital in a few months. Um, we've already lost physicians, at least eight uh, are in, in service physicians who got word, who heard the announcement. They have families and mortgages and careers, and so they, they left us. And it's difficult to recruit and replace them if the word is on the street that you might only have until June of 2019 to have a position in Meharry Medical College. That's not, that's not something someone wants to hear if you're trying to recruit them <coughs> to a highly skilled profession uh, on our faculty. So I'm in agreement with uh, Dr. Webb that it would be much better to have an indefinite uh, sort of time frame. But we have been arguing all along that we needed time to develop a new plan because medicine is changing. The emphasis is on different things now. Uh, there's an emphasis on ambulatory care and keeping people out of the inpatient services. There's a disease management model that Joe was putting in place anyway. So there's a lot of things happening that we need to be doing. And we were trying to do those things anyway, and this was sort of like a hand grenade thrown into the middle of our, our, our plan. So uh, 18 months is better than six. But the truth is, it's really hard to get anybody to come who's worth having when there's a time horizon that's so short. Because most people stay at these institutions for quite a long time. Um, so, but as I said, I was very encouraged by the conversation last night because it gave us all hope that we can come to some uh, new understanding, a new model that we can have for a long term. Which is what we all want. May I make a comment also? Mm -hmm. um, President Hildreth convened a stakeholders work group, which I know we've had controversy surrounding that. And part of it was the transparency, but part of the reason that we wanted to be close is we wanted to have frank discussions. But at the beginning, in the first meeting, and, and Frida was there, and Dawn was there, we had representatives from the city there. I felt that we needed that time to take a systems approach to the indigent care for the city of Nashville. 
and that Nashville had an opportunity to not just be the it city for, um, what do you call them? Country music. Parties, mm -hmm. but it could be the it city for how you do indigent care for the nation. But the, to, to come up with a plan like that takes time. It takes the best minds. It takes transparency. It takes intricate thinking. And we were under the impression that we had to get a plan to the mayor's office by April. And I don't think you do your best work under that pressure. You don't come up with the most cost-effective plan for indigent care. I do think that we need a safety net hospital with some uh, inpatient services, but how that looks, considering the, the future of health care, that's something that, that we need time and the best minds to investigate. And all over the nation, if you heard the, the announcement from Amazon and, and Berkshire Hathaway, people everywhere are trying to figure this out. And I don't know what makes we, us think that we can figure it out, you know, in six weeks. So that's what this is. Okay. Thank you. Well, we do have one of the greater minds in safety net health care. Uh, essential hospitals going to be on TSU campus tomorrow. That's right. At 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of you have been invited to a All two, of them have two, been 2 p.m. session. I'm hoping uh, just to, for the introduction, but the 3 p.m. largest session. Uh, you're certainly all invited to uh, Dr. Bruce Siegel. He'll be here. He's president of the uh, America's Essential Hospitals. He's been doing this for a number of years. He's run safety net hospitals, and this is 327 hospitals across the country uh, <coughs> that he, uh, his association represents. Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Uh, and Mr. Jameson is not in the room. Uh, I, and I hear you. Thank you. And I understand what your, your, your concerns are, and frankly, I, I completely agree with it. My question is, is this amendable on, th on third reading? I'm not certain it is. Um, if it is not amendable on third reading, um, and I'm just tossing it out, are we better off to defer tonight to find out, do we need to, to amend? And, and here's, here's, where my, here's where my thinking is. If we say a timeline of June 30th, 2019, but we, ha we as a council have an option to extend that with another 12 months, because I also hear what you're saying as well. Uh, I, we, we can't obligate the next council, but because we will be here in, in the next budget cycle, uh, if we look at amending this to say, yeah, but you can't do it before June 30th, 2019, but in the event the work is not done, the way it needs to be done with the thoroughness that has to occur. I wonder if we can amend to say it would automatically renew by April 30th. And I'm just I'm throwing a I'm throwing a thing out because frankly, I, I'm not sure if we can amend on third. This is not Title 17, so yeah. I, I, don't I don't know. I would say do 2019 if we need to bring another bill forward. Okay. Extend it. And I, I, I will take right now it's 2018. If that doesn't make it the, the the proposal on the table, if there's nothing that goes forward, it's 2018. So we're still giving another one. We need to come back and read it. So could I make a motion to defer one meeting and re-refer to this committee? To this deferring committee, but on the floor. No, actually, what I'm asking is I, I don't know that I want to defer. Uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm I'm asking can we amend? Uh, and I, and I think what we do, I mean, the committee vote how you want to, but what I would say is I'll, I, I, when I leave here, I'll go ask Mr. Jamison if we can amend. If we can't amend, I think I, would, I will go with the chairperson's recommendation that we go ahead and we pass this, and then we bring another bill up if it looks like the, the, that the timeline's not working so, correctly. So do you want us to recommend tonight? I want you to recommend approval. I yes. move to recommend. All right. I'm not finished. Like, I have one other thing I want to say okay. uh, in response to the answers here. There is one concern I have. I'm going I'm to support whatever it is you guys want to do on this. But uh, if we've got this bill hanging over and this six months goes away and then infinity comes into play, this is still hanging over you and people will still see this 18 month uh, thing. Will, will you be able to send a different message or? Will people still be looking at the hospital and uh, Meharry with a bill that says June of 2019 hanging over their heads? I think what matters is what comes out of the legislative body and the executive body's uh, open conversation about National General, more so than uh, what the bill says. 
because most people are not going to go and read the bill. They're going to hear. People in the hospital are going to hear what you say, and that's what they're going to believe in. Okay. This player. Do you agree? Do you agree with that? Hello. So. Can I just say something? Councilman Weiner had to leave to read in okay. the council okay. meeting. She just said she sees the 18 months as sort of necessary stability for the hospital and an opportunity to work through a strategic plan for those 18 months. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate that. And then. Look at you. Y'all was taking up my meeting. That's no, 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 no. I'm just trying to slow everybody. Afraid of us losing Yeah, we're about to lose that. So we're going to do council, uh, maybe um, Miss uh, Frida Player, and then we're going to close up because we're beginning to lose our people anyway. Yeah, yeah I just want to speak on behalf to support employees who are, you know, hospital authority employees, but also who are under Metro benefits. We've taken a lot of hits over the past couple of years, but also more importantly, um, if we went with an original decision and given what happened just with the budget, there was commitment earlier from the administration that there would have been a transfer of Metro employees if the hospital had to close if some extreme, given what happened, if there would have been a hiring freeze, a promotion freeze, that puts the support staff in a tough position if there was. So it gives time for the transition for employees that are, you know, nurses, you know, dietary, environmental, for them to be transferred to other Metro departments if something would happen. And so we need time for that because that's one something that's been left out of discussion about what happens to severance pays? What happens to commitment that Metro has? What happens to the pension? What happens to the health care benefits that the support employees have under a Metro government that comes under the hospice of Metro government that hospital authority has to pay? So that's one of the things that we would like more time. So it gives more time to work out with the council, with the administration, with the hospital authority. If cuts or layoffs had to happen, we hope it doesn't, but how do other Metro departments absorb the Metro employees who took a lot of sacrifices. We've done furloughs, we've been kicked out of the defined pension plan, things like that for the hospital to maintain. And we take those sacrifices seriously and we took them because we had a commitment to the city and to the health care of the city. So I also put that together that gives the support staff time and for us as a union to represent and to work through if the drastic, if the worst case scenario has to happen, how does that happen for Metro employees and what does that look like? And there's time and funds available to do that too. So maybe it would be best to go ahead and defer this and then give us a little bit more time to work on both in terms of how we want to frame what it is that we will do. So I think what we just need to think about right now, the proposal that is on the table is 2018, right? So if this passes, at 20, minimum. 2018, did you say? 20, yeah, no, I'm saying, well, I'm saying it correct. It's 2018. What we have now. Right, which is what the mayor has proposed. Oh, that's right, 20, but, what, yeah. but what the other amendment that we just passed here, and we're going to vote on that tonight. tonight. Right. Would that not change? So, no. To 19? So, this is, no, um, this is a, the thinking here. Okay, so the messaging at this point has been, we haven't had control of the messaging, right? And so, as a result of that, the, I'm just being as transparent as possible. The hospital has suffered, right? And so then they come back, they tell us honestly what they need, and then we say, no, 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 right? Like, why didn't y'all do that right? But we're not acknowledging the factors that have played into that. So the idea is that the 2019 provides more stability. It sends a message to the employees. sends a message, I think, Someone gave the uh, number last night that said it's been a 30% drop in patients. Like, the hospital's still open until they can figure out a new model. No one's saying that it may not need a new model, right. but until then, we don't want to run it into the ground. I, th I think, like Dr. Hildreth has shared, you, you got these uh, very professional staff. No one's going to stay around for six months if they're very professional they can go anywhere. So that's the idea. And if we need to extend it, we can't. But until then, it's just saying, hey, we're giving them time. We know that there's three or four plans out there. Uh, the uh, hospital authority's been working on one. Dr. Hildreth has been working on one. And then I think the mayor's going to put forth another group. So with all those different plans, I feel like something can come out of that. And if we need to extend it, we can extend it more. But at 2018, that's... So that's were you time. asking for the 2019 date, or were you saying it needed to go, you might need longer? As the bill stands, we're happy with the bill that stands. Okay. But this... Oh, okay. And Madam Chair, if I may, I'm not going to speak on your behalf, I'll speak on my behalf, and then you can uh, agree or disagree. I think that if the two of us who have sponsored this bill are willing to come back again and, and we meet with Dr. Webb and we meet with, with, with Harry and the other stakeholders and we say, look, there, there, will, there will be needed more time 
I have, frankly, I like your recommendation. I think, I think right now the importance of this bill is it does allow stability. And I think we as a council need to give that to the city, to the, the, the people working there, to the potential patients, the patients that are now right, that are there today. So I, I, I hope we don't move to defer this. Okay, I'm good with it. Okay. So how many uh, fours? All right. Seeing that against is recommended for approval. Thank you so much, Thank committee. You, Madam Appreciate Chair. you. Have a good day. Dr. Hilton.